who better to take a walk down memory lane than <laughs> Wolfie himself, the three-time former Lakeside World Champion, Martin Adams. Hello, Martin. Well, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Hello, sir. Now, I would love to talk about each and every year you've competed on the Lakeside stage, 25 years in all, but we do not have enough room on the videotape for that, so we are going to skip through things. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, I think, firstly, a reaction to the fact that we are returning to the magnificent Lakeside. Well, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I was so disappointed the year we weren't there when uh, a World Championship was played by the radio. Um, to walk away from the Lakeside was just a wrong thing to do. Iconic. There were so many people that went there every year. You saw familiar faces every year. Yeah, you know, people that just come there to watch. I mean, it's just brilliant. So hopefully we will see those lovely faces again. Yep, the pilgrimage can return. Yes. Uh, a word before we go on about your own career, uh, the proprietor himself, Bob Potter OBE. I mean, his dedication to this event. They've been host sponsor since 2004. Uh, and, and he just loves the tournament, doesn't he? He loves it. Oh, Bob, he, he sort of counts the days till it's, till it's on. And the one of the... The amazing things you see, two days before it starts, there's Bob running around, moving tables, moving chairs. Yes. Yeah, he's got staff to do it, but Bob loves doing that. And he just goes and does all the chairs and the tables and that, and he moves them around, adjusts them and so forth, and he's counting, and makes sure he's got the right numbers. Oh, it's amazing to watch him. Oh, he'll make sure he can fit as many people in as possible. Don't you worry oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been the home of World Darts. It began at the lakeside in 1986. Your journey began in 1994, the first year you qualified. And, and just by coincidence, it was also the first year I attended as a fan. So our journey yeah. started in 1994. What do you remember about your debut? Well, uh, it was the one thing that always stands out was the first round. I got Perscal, first leg, done him in 12 darts, single 20, treble 17, bullseye. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, that comes in those down. Oh, it must have been amazing. I think you you won the game with a, a 120 yeah, as well. Oh, I can't remember whether I won the game on 120 or not. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, that. I think you did. Uh, yeah, and but... a 3-0 win settled you in no end. You reached the quarterfinals that year, losing out to Magnus Karras, who yeah. famously then lost to Bobby George in that classic semi-final. Yes. <laughs> but um, you reached the semi-finals the year after. But I think that the match that, that always comes to to be mentioned whenever we talk about your lakeside history is that epic match between yourself and Chris Mason in the quarterfinals of 1999. It, it, you set a, a 180 record yourself, um, yeah. despite being on the losing end. But the, the story of that match, if you haven't seen it, go on to, to social media and, and check it out because it's just absolutely tremendous. You led 4-1. I don't want to remind him of this, but no, that's all you right. led 4-1. You had nine darts to win the match. And I yeah. think eight of the nine were literally on the wire, Martin. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, the one thing that, I mean, I, I've worked with Chris quite a lot. And the one thing that when we're talking about it, Chris always mentions is the 160 out. Yes. And Chris standing behind me going, where on earth did that come from? That, you're right, because you'd missed the darts to yeah. win. Chris then put himself in a winning position. Yeah. He missed the darts to win. And you saved the match in the tie break with a 160 checkout. Yeah, yeah it remains I mean, one of the great lakeside shots. What? <laughs> and then the drama that we had, all the 180s, the missed doubles, the comeback, the 160. And what double does it all end on? Double the one. one. <laughs> <laughs> a classic that went to Chris Mason there. But Martin, you had your moments. I mean, let's now fast forward to, it was a long wait, let's be honest. Yeah. The 14th time of asking 2007. Yeah. Remember that final? Certainly do. The yeah. great late Phil Nixon. Yes, indeed, yeah. I was 6-0 up. And I, I just didn't think it was the Phil Nixon I knew that was playing. I thought, well, I know Phil plays better than this. And you're, you're waiting for it to start. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And then we, I'm 6-0 up. We go for the break. Come back on. And I remember seeing seeing Phil, the bottom of the stairs. He's got three darts in his hand like this. Banged his up in the leg with him. And then went out to play. And he took the next six sets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was the Phil Nixon I knew, the way he was playing. The drama felt similar to that Mason match we've referred to in 99, yeah. that you had chances in a lot of the sets. A lot yeah. of the sets went 3-2. Yeah. You missed your chance, Phil stepped in. So yeah. they were like mini matches in the comeback, yeah. weren't they, to it get back amazing. to 6-all. Uh, the leg I remember the most about that final, I know you're going to remember the checkout to win it, but the leg I remember is 6-6. Six, six. 
Mr. Nixon has run off the six sets in a row. He starts that 13th and final set, misses a dart for a 12 darter with throw. Yeah. You yourself had scored 140, 140, 180 and went out on 41 for a 12 darter of your own. That, for yeah. me, wins you the title. Well, it was until the final double, really. 54 on, 14 tops, two darts, and thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the bit that wins it. Uh, you know, and I, like you say, I'd been chasing that for 14 years. And never quite managed to get there. Been in a final before. That didn't work out for me. And semi-finals that I'd lost and so forth. But, you know, long last, 2007. But you came back in 2010 and picked up your second world title. A brilliant final. One of your best performances on the Lakeside stage against Dave Chisnell. Yeah, that was uh, really quite good. Um, the only real thing I remember about that was, I was told, I mean, this was at breakfast the following morning, that, that Dave had been up half the night. Um, I thought, well, that's either going to be good or bad. But, and it turned out it was good. It Absolutely. was good news for me. I mean, you, that was a hell of a game. It was. You hit a purple patch in a particular set. There was a, a 170 finish, yeah. a 156 finish. There was a 10 data in there as well. I mean, you really were uh, your best there. And you came back yeah. a year on and held on to the title, made it the hat trick and defended it successfully, beating Dean Wynn Stanley in 2011. Yeah, he wasn't so over the top that day, was he? No. No. But no, that was going to have another great game, you know. And uh, I mean, Dean was a tremendous opponent and he was uh, described as the guy that, that couldn't count but managed to get through to the final. And I remember watching a couple of his games from the commentary box and, yeah, his counting was awful, but he was winning. So just goes to show you don't have to be a great counter to win a game of darts. I can't promote that, Martin, but you do have a good <laughs> point. You do have a good point. <laughs> um Moving forward to, the, I then came into the game on the stage in 2014. So I, I must say, I, I, I had the best view in the house uh, of your walk on, yeah. uh, of, of having the, the atmosphere in that building is unlike any other. And introducing you to that crowd that by then you'd appeared there 20 odd times. Um, tell us a bit about the crowd and the atmosphere in that room. Well, the atmosphere can be really electric. Uh, it, it it builds up as the event goes on and it, it gets better and better and better. And you walk on, to your first walk on of the, of the tournament, you might think to yourself, well, that was a bit, well, that wasn't quite as loud as normal. But then second round, it's louder, third, louder, and, and it just builds up. Yeah, it's fantastic. You can't buy that sort of thing. You know, the atmosphere is just what it is and it's just built up and it's a great venue for that. And the ceilings were altered years ago by request of the BBC to help build that atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's done the trick. It certainly has. And, yeah. and in recent years, certainly my favourite match across the six years I was MC there, your semi final in 2015 against Glenn Durrant. You nearly had the most magic moment of them all. I mean, you've got Very your three world titles, Martin, but on the wire for the nine dart finish. I know, yeah. But you didn't go in, would have been a few quid better off then. There is that. <laughs> there is that. Um, I mean, but no, it was, but uh, what a match overall. What a match. I was, yeah. I mean, there, there was a feeling from different quarters, you know, that oh, Glenn was going to win it. And then there was the other quarters that were saying, oh, Martin's going to win it. But, you know, we went up there and we played a fantastic match. And it was what it was. And uh, yeah, close to a nine data, but just not close enough. Yeah, that was the 30th Lakeside World Championship. And for me, the <laughs> best game in, you know, Without doubt, in my short time on yeah, that stage, yeah. but for you and all the years you've played, there aren't many better than that one. Oh, no, no. I mean, you, you always have your favourite matches. I mean, you know, 2007 is always going to be, mm. you know, the big one for me from, from that point of view. But yeah, there have been some fantastic matches on that stage. You know, I, I haven't been involved in lots of them. But uh, Lakeside Classics, I believe, <laughs> is the term. Yep. Yeah. To call in the phrase. Now we come closer and closer up to date. Your 25th year, 2018, 25 years in a mm. row at the Lakeside. A great achievement in itself. And then the draw that could have been scripted. The number one seed is Mark McGinney that yeah. year. And he draws the man that's playing in his 25th World Championship in the very first round. Yeah. And what a game. Nick Rolls, the referee, he went all the way to yeah. the 11th Southern yeah. Death Leg in the final set. That was the thing, yeah. I mean, we played every leg possible, virtually. Uh, we, you know, we played all sets. We played the, the tiebreaker, the lot. You know, so it was fantastic. And uh, well, 
The rest of it is history, isn't it? Yeah, it didn't go your way. Mark <laughs> went on to reach the, the final and obviously missed starts to become champion. It all could have been different if that final leg had gone your way. Um, the 26th year, 2019, that was our last at Lakeside. And yes. it was the first one that you didn't qualify for. No, I didn't, know. But the broadcasters, Eurosport, had you as part of the team. I was on stage as MC. You were on stage throughout as a yes. pundit for the yes. channel. That's right. The crowd that year, Martin, I, you could argue you had a better reception that year than the 25 years previous. You they had them howling every single session. They were absolutely phenomenal. And at their loudest, uh, <laughs> I, I had to stand there. I mean, I, if, I'm sure if, you, if there's video of it, I'm standing there, I'm pushing the earpiece into my ear, trying to block out the crowd so I could actually hear what was being said to me and hear what the interview was asking me. I was just amazing. The crowd were absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for any more support in your, you know, your 26th year of visiting the lakeside, you couldn't ask for greater support from any crowd. They were just beyond belief. Yes, yeah, sadly, it didn't go out on air, but we gave Martin a walk-on to celebrate the 25-year achievement. I think that walk-on was bigger than any we've ever done at that, at that tournament. I mean, incredible, the atmosphere, the reception yeah. you received. Oh, it was. It was just fantastic. And it is one of those things that, you know, you, you, you treasure. For the rest of your career, um, you know, having having played twenty five years at one venue is just quite phenomenal. Um, 